My name is Bella Kay. I live in Inuvik, the Northwest Territories, but I'm originally from Fort McPherson. My parents were Peter, the late Peter Kay and Mary Kay. I came from a large family, and there was 12 of us. My parents adopted their first granddaughter, so which made 13. We take her as a sister. Um, I taught for many years in the elementary school, K to grade six, classroom teacher. And then I went into teaching the Gujan language in year of 1992. And I just retired in um, 2016. No, 2015. So I still volunteer around the school whenever they need me, and I'm more than willing to do it. I feel comfortable with uh, the students and teachers and the staff at the school. So tell me, uh, what, are, what are you doing out in the tent here? What, what ages are coming by and what are you doing? Like every year they have, like in November, they have a... Uh, they call it a bootleg camp, uh, and it's a traditional um, camp, like they set the um, fishnet under the ice, beginning to the end, and the children watch. And we always make the students figure out how much fish you think we're going to catch today, you know, and as they're pulling the net, the fish, you know, we count and we name the fish in the two languages, Inavalutun and Guchin. And it's K to six grades. And this, the, the camp that uh, is at the boot, uh, in Inuvik uh, Boot Lake, it's just a uh, walking distance. So it's just day trips. Uh, we take one grade in the morning and we do their activities and stuff like that with them at the camp and then we bring them back, and then in the afternoon we take another grade out. And it's right till after three, and that's Monday to Friday. What are, what are you hoping to pass on to these kids when they come to you? Okay, what we pass on to the students is, uh, uh, we talk about the, the different types of fish, what the Inavalut and the Guchin people do with them, like year round. Like um, in the summer, we go to the fish camp and make dry fish for the winter. In the fall and winter, we uh, prepare them for cooking for our meals and other people, the community, for the winter. And we show them how to cut it, and we name all the parts of the fish. And if we have time, we cook it and they try it. How do you how do you know the program has been a success? After the program is over, and it takes about maybe a week, I think, or as we start early, is we have little we have lessons in the classroom. We ask to like kind of review and uh, to see if the students remember uh, what we taught them at the camp, and then. Seeing that it's going to Christmas time, we get them to make uh, Christmas cards, and they do a really good job. Second question, what does Indigenous education mean to you? What I'm looking, hoping for is in the future, the high school students, they should have courses like, you know, like with the, what they're taught at the camp, and they could be marked that way. And there's so many things that you could be teaching the students, like on the land, the sewing, like making their own slippers, making their own. I know they do it now, but most time it's done for them, you know, and they should be doing, learning to do it on their own, you know. Really pushing uh, the students to to get involved with stuff that goes on with uh, the Aboriginal people, like in the communities. You know, this is way, the way they learn and they have to try, they have to try mm -hmm. in order to 
to know how to do it, and they get better at it as they keep trying. And where, where do you hope to see Indigenous education go in the next 10 years? I think that the, the parents, the grandparents, uh, our elders that we have now should be really helping the teachers, you know, uh, to do all these traditional teaching. Because in the future, I'm like 72 now, and like it kind of bothers me because the, the, I find that we have elders, middle age, the youth. Like I'm always hearing on the radio, in, I read it in the newspaper, and I hear it on CBC. And we should get all our knowledge from the elders. What about the, the middle age? I, I really feel strongly the middle age is losing out because they need to learn to do these things and, you know, start getting interested in it. And uh, I think the parents are mainly stressing on the parents and grandparents to help, you know, uh, the teachers, you know, get involved and you know, make it fun for everyone. Uh, so that's the end of our interview. Is there anything else you'd like to add? What I like to add is, um, you know, it's really, uh, uh, I look at myself like I struggled when I went to school. And I know a lot of students do. And they should um, have some sort of a program for students especially in the traditional, the Gucin traditional way and in evaluate way, maybe then they'll, they'll get interested and like going to school, you know, and try harder, you know, and, uh, and they should make it fun and they should be kind, you know, really kind to the students. Mm -hmm. and so that way they'll, they'll feel better about themselves, you know.